This episode of SMA's Fireside Chats come from his remarks made at the Holistic Health and Fitness Symposium. All right, so this is really an opportunity for him to stress the importance of leadership in H2F. And, you know, we can have all the policy in the world, but I think policy without leadership is really just a piece of paper. So it's kind of a discussion on, you know, how do leaders take something like H2F and really implement it uh, in a way that makes sense for their units. So I want to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about leadership, and then I'm going to talk about staff as we go through some of the pillars of holistic health and fitness, and then we'll open it up for any kind of questions that you have, okay? And I'm gonna start off with saying um, my disappointment, my failure. My failure is we don't have enough commanders and command sergeant majors in the room. So this is my fault. When I, when I really listened to General Brunson and, and I thought about my life as, you know, the Sergeant Major of the Army. And what I've learned as a Sergeant Major of the Army, you need, you need a couple of things to get things through in the Army. Um, and having one without the other will actually not work. Number one, you, you might have to have a policy, maybe. But you can take all the policies in the world, and you can take that, and you don't have leadership applied with that, you actually have nothing. What you have is a good piece of paper. Um, and so my failure is that we need more, we need CSMs and more commanders, not just one core commander in here. We need more, and I'd say, I probably should have said, hey, I'm going to be here, and I expect you all to be here. All I have to do is say something like that, and then, you know, the whole room, sergeant majors will just appear. <laughs> it's magical how that happens. And then sometimes I bring my friends with me. And then if I bring the chief or the secretary or the vice with me, and then it's magical, all the commanders start appearing like right up front too. <laughs> so if, if I were here uh, next year, and I'll pass this on to Sergeant Major Weimer, in order to do prevention of things, we have to do better with holistic health and fitness. I'll say that one more time. In order to do prevention of things, we have to do really well with holistic health and fitness. And it doesn't matter the things at the other side. What we've been really good at with the Army and Americans in general is that we're really good at responding to stuff. So if you don't understand that in America, like almost 91 to 92% of our laws are dealing with response. And I'll give you an example. I'll even give you an example in the Army. So we want to add a sexual assault response coordinator. But what's already happened? The sexual assault. So we want to prevent it. And just recently, this year, they were like, oh, we should have some prevention specialists. 200 and almost 48 years in the United States Army, and we're going to add a prevention specialist. Now, I'd say we had some before. It's called sergeant, you know, captain. So you should be able to prevent things. However, that's just how we looked at the world. It's like we like to respond. It's like something happened, then we go take an action. Something happens, then we're going to take an action. So the, way, the reason holistic health and fitness got so much uh, conversation yesterday is because it's prevention. If, I'm a, if I am connected and I have a purpose in my life, spiritual, I'm less likely to have a suicide. If I'm part of a member of a team that we work out together, why would I let anybody harass or assault that teammate? That's prevention. That's what we want to go. And that's the reason why this forum is so important and we need more leaders. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through a couple of things. Number one, physical. Um, I love physical. When most people go to holistic health and fitness, the first thing we think of is physical. It's, and I probably should have put last, but I, I did the same thing. So <laughs> it's not, you know, it's all the other things you're going to forget about. So one aspect of this on leadership, and this is why we need, you know, how many battalion commanders do we have in the room? Like, raise your hand. Like any? Do we have one? Give me one. None. More failure. Oh, uh, it's my fault. 
But, okay, so I'd ask when uh, Italian Star Major, maybe, <laughs> hey, come on up, we'll give you a coin. You're the only one in the room. All <laughs> 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 right, right. <laughs> we found one, yeah. All right, so um, let's talk about physical, and I'd say we're leadership. Where are you at? Where are you at 6.30? Are you... Are you at, I mean, not, oh, wait, I'm late. We had the 6 o'clock, and then we'll let me catch up to my unit. And, oh, backwards, I don't know why a little bit. Um, and, and everything I have is tied to a story, right? Okay, so I love my wife. I truly love my wife. And she talks to Tony all the time, and that's, that's my little secret. Okay, it's Michael Anthony. Get over it. I go by Tony. So, um, so she's going to say, I'm talking to Tony right now. Not this, you know, the Sar Major. I'm like, okay. So she's about to tell something that Sar Major Grinston's going to get pissed off about. So, <laughs> so she goes, well, you know, my friend, and I know who her friend's husband is. Yeah, he doesn't always go to PT. I'm like, he's a battalion commander in the United States Army. I'm like, what unit? I'm a, I already knew what unit it was in. I know. But she's telling me about how her friend's husband doesn't always go out to PT. And I knew for a fact he was a battalion commander in the United States Army. Now, believe it or not, I mean, how many times has this happened? Right? I mean, you, you get overcome, you do that 6 o'clock. If it's important, you are going to be there. Remember that policy followed by leadership. It's going to come out a lot in everything that I say. You can say, yeah, let's do PT at 6.30. You know what's more important? Is that you're there at 6.30 doing PT with your unit. You don't have to lead it. You don't have to be the first one up front. You just got to be present. I am not as fast as I used to be, but I still love to be at the soldiers run down the road yesterday. Like, hey, sorry, Major. <laughs> they passed me. So uh, <laughs> it's okay, but you have to be present in the physical uh, you have to have a master fitness trainer. You have all these things. But if you don't have a leader present, I think you all can do the best that you can. You can put up the program. But it will be more important when the, when the sergeant major or the first sergeant standing right there next to you and going, this is going to be the program of my unit. Help me how to do this. So that's number one. And that's how you help them on the staff side. You would say, here's the program. I'm going to help you. But Let's go out and let's check it out. Let's see how it's working for my unit. Physical. Nutrition. My favorite one. Where did everybody eat this morning? Anybody eating the defect? Like, who's that? Somebody way in the back? And who? Okay, what defect did you go to? I didn't see you in there. <laughs> Warrior Cafe. Is that the name of the place we went? Okay, General Small's in. Okay, I get you. There you go. I'm with you. All right. There you go. Give my hand around the applause. What, the rest of you, shame on you. Okay, if you're a leader, where, okay, where do your soldiers fuel their body? Where? Where are you? I mean, seriously now. Let's drop it. Let's call it like it is. Where are you? Well, I don't want to, I, I, a lieutenant, you know, I don't, let me get lieutenants in the DFAC. Like, first of all, you should have no money, you should be in the DFAC. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, your soldiers, we talk about nutrition, and you all want to talk about, it. I want to get good nutrition, and you don't show up in the DFAC to see how they prepare the meals and how soldiers are supposed to fuel their bodies. Shame on you. Go to the DFAC. Be there every meal. I showed up on Fort Carson on Saturday about a week ago, and they're like, oh, my God. That's Sergeant Major of the Army. He's eating. I have to do that. You know that, right? But it was Saturday. I was like, the DFAC's open. Let's go. And actually, I'm going to be honest with you, it was actually really good. And, and they had a really good salad bar. You know, I just, you know, you know like a... General Brunson was saying the pants were getting a little tight. <laughs> it's like, uh, so I eat a salad. I usually have about a salad, and I go straight to the salad bar. Can I get some protein? Do I have all the lettuce? Do I just get iceberg? Do I get some spinach? Do I get some other things I want to put on my salad? 
And normally, if you have a really good saddle bar on a weekend, you're defects. I call that winning. What it asks you all as leaders is, are you there? And demand that they do better. You can do this. You, the defects can't do it on their own. It, it takes leadership. you got to be present. Um, and then if you're a dietitian, demand better. And, and then help us, and we'll get you the money. I know, I got the vice. Vice has been pushing back on this for years. You know, when he was at Fort Carson, everybody was like, I can't believe you gave more money to the, for food in the dining facilities. And I'm like laughing. I'm like, I can't believe you actually criticizing him for doing that. So, uh, you know, one day he might be, well, guess what? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I think we're going to have plenty of money to have better quality in the dining facilities. But what I need your help from a dietitian is say, hey, we're going to go in there and how do I fuel the bodies? So do I have some protein shakes or do I have the things that I need right after PT in that dining facility? Do I or not? And then are you in there watching what they're eating? Did I go too far? Are, they, are, they, are you watching what they're eating? And most of the time, uh, I don't see a lot of leadership uh, in the defects when I go in there. Matter of fact, uh, anytime I actually see somebody higher than the rank of like staff sergeant, I usually give them a coin. In about five, six years, I may be given like three coins. Just so you know. Okay, let's talk about sleep. So I've been criticized yesterday. It's like, Sergeant Major, you got eight hours sleep? Yeah. It's like, I was like, it's pretty close. I went to bed around nine, I got up at 4.45. It's like, I got to sleep in. I'm going to be honest, I usually get about 4.15. Um, so it's, that's, yesterday I was like, ooh, cool. Um, sleep is so important, but here's one thing I tell you, as, and I said I would talk about it. Leaders have this badge of honor. Anybody in a special operations unit? Come on, sir, raise your hand. I see you right here. Okay. <laughs> it's like, you don't want to raise your hand? Are you embarrassed? You got a 173rd Sky Soldiers patch on your shoulder. Love the one you're with, sir. You love the one you're with. Okay. I was there when we made that patch. <laughs> you guys think I'm joking. I was losing no, no, It's actually a true story. Um, I'm very proud to be a former Sky Soldier. Um, so special operations folks, what do you pride yourself on? How much sleep did you get? Oh, sorry. You went to bed last night? I stayed up all night. How many have been in the unit that, that were like that? Come on, raise your hand. Everybody should be raising your hand. Like every unit I've ever been in, it's like you go to combat and that's all you talk about. It's like, I, I got no sleep last night. Oh, you slept. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, it's one of those things people got to do. Um, but I would say that you're making life or death decisions and it's like, that's exactly what, when you, we've got studies on this, right? I'm not a, I'm like, I'm with General Brunson, I'm not a doctor, but there's somebody in here that can verify. Am I, am I correct, right? The less sleep you have, you're using not the full capacity of your brain, you are sleep deprived, it's just like having a couple beers and you're going to make a life, disease, life or death decision on to attack, not attack, send the QRF, don't send it, and you're not using the full capacity of your brain. And we pride ourselves on it. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. You know what's even worse? Is that after something really bad happens in combat, we want to go back and have an investigation, and then when we're well rested and we're all back here and we're all looking at it, what do we do? Oh, I can't believe they did that. Right? Yeah. You're right. But number one, we should never judge that. You don't know. You were never there. You have no idea what you're talking about 90% of the time. But we really do have to look at this sleep thing and it stopped being this badge of honor about how less sleep you got. That is a culture in the Army we need to change. Okay. Um, and what you can do if you're in the staff, you should actually, you know, my best resource would be the chaplain. You know, Sergeant Major, chaplain, go in and say, boss, you need to go to bed. If you're a staff, XO or a three, and you're the commander's like, okay, no. This is when you will sleep. And, and what I tell the leadership is, 
especially when you're making those hard decisions, is that a, are they waking you up to make a decision? And this is really important. Are they waking you up and asking you to do something to make a decision? 99% of the time, they are giving you a history lesson that you can do nothing about. You know, and I'd, I'd be the Sergeant Major's Army. It's like, Sergeant Major, now, um, I'm going to call you at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell you somebody's dead. What, what do I do with that? I make no decisions. I know that's really bad, right? It is really bad. But I, I, I can't change time. I can't. There's no effect on the Army to prevent that. If you're waking me up to prevent something, you need a decision that only this person can make. That's what you need to have a conversation about. Uh, and then we have to be well-rested every day. And believe it or not, every day, not even in combat, you make life or death decisions. I'll give you an example. Soldiers go into the motor pool. They're just going to take a vehicle out. They're just, they're just going to do a routine mission. They're in a, a combat service support unit. They're driving a big vehicle. Um, they're just starting. It's early in the morning. They're just going to drive the vehicle out of the motor pool except for the simple fact that the driver fell asleep and ran over the ground guy and killed him. I think sleep's kind of important. You have to talk about it. You, but leaders have to model good sleep behavior, and then you have to find a way to force this on our soldiers. This isn't just about combat. This is about that story is real. That really actually happened in the United States Army. And we don't hold ourselves accountable that we didn't have a good sleep habit. And we didn't model that. I think we need to do. Okay. Spiritual. Let's talk about purpose. you got to have purpose in your life. And every time people hear about purpose, um, you know, or spiritual, sometimes they think religious. It's just having a sense of identity. And that's what a lot of our soldiers are missing. We're doing an initiative called Keys to Connection. And we're finding is that the young men and women, they don't, they're like, you know, what's the purpose now? And we've done this too, right? I was with a unit yesterday. A lot of them didn't have combat patches. And they're like, when are we going to go to combat? Well, my statement was, I hope you don't. And they're like, oh, my goodness, our major. How could you say that? I was like, yeah. Well, I don't know what units you've been in. Well, you haven't because you had not been to combat. So, but, you know, for those that had, you know, pretty much in one brigade, everybody in here is wounded or dead. I mean, 10th Mountain, 2008, uh, 52, 54 killed, 250 wounded in one rotation. That's literally everybody in here is either wounded or dead in one brigade. So I go, yeah, I don't, I don't want you to go to combat. <laughs> but, they, you know, I appreciate that you want to go, but let's not, let's not go there. But then they, they were struggling with this identity and purpose in the Army. And I think what we have to do is provide them purpose. There is still a lot of purpose when you wake up and be in the United States Army. And I thought about this on Monday. It was really weird. I don't know. I don't know. I think I, I get real clear thought in the morning doing PT. And when I was doing deadlifts, it's Monday. I was doing deadlifts, and all of a sudden, I was like, yeah, there we go. Don't judge my form on that right there. So I was doing my deadlifts, and I thought, why do I, why am I doing this? Why do I do this? And I thought about my purpose. I said, this is what I thought. Literally on Monday, I said, I would train every day I'm in the Army like I'm going to war tomorrow. Because you never know that you might go to war tomorrow. So every day I wake up, that's the way I train. I've been doing this for 36 years and I can't stop it. Because sometimes, you know, when people go, I remember a major, I was in the Pentagon, I was like, hey, what are you training for? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't even know how to answer that question. I was like, I don't know. This is, because I told him my workout. I was like, that's like, first of all, you're old. You know, he had that look like, oh, you're old. And I'm like, it's like, what are you doing all that hard stuff for? And I'm like, and then Monday I figured it out. I train every day like tomorrow I'm going to go to war. And I still think like that as the Sergeant Major of the Army. Um, and that's your purpose. 
And I think our soldiers don't understand that I think we got to give them some purpose. Okay. Now, with all that said, um, I'm going to close this out with a couple of things that, you know, you know, what are we doing about all this? Are you giving all this stuff? Um, actually, I got one more story that I'd ask you. Okay. This is really important. Any uh, physical therapists in here? Okay. Oh, man. I'm going to be so, so I'm, I'm getting so much trouble on this story. <laughs> I really like what General Brunson talked about yesterday about being injured. We all get injured. You know, it's like you look at the Sergeant Major Army, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't eat, and he doesn't get injured. It's not true. So in 2019, brand new Sergeant Major of the Army, and uh, it's going to be my first 10 miler. I got to run the 10 miler. I'm, you know, I'm like, I got to do this. This is, I've been running the 10 miler for a while. But now I'm going to do this Sergeant Major of the Army. So this is really important for me. I think the Army, i got to get out there and start one wave, and I'm going to run. And I stepped in a hole. And it's like, and I was like alone and unafraid at like 5 o'clock in the morning. And the good news is I was about a mile out. I've already run nine miles. I'm not doing the Army 10 miles now. I'm training for it. So I stepped in a hole. I hurt my knee. It's about a month away. And I'm like, oh, dear God. I'm trying to get back to Fort Myer, and it's all uphill. I finally make it. And I can't walk. I'm in my office, and everybody's freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, we're going to get a wheelchair. I'm like, you are not getting a wheelchair. <laughs> they literally came with I'm like, you are not getting a wheelchair. I said, I refuse. And I'm limping. And I go down to the physical therapist. And the physical therapist looked at me, and she's, like, doing some stuff and said, okay, sorry, Major. I said, you know, I had to be honest. I said, ma'am, I got to. I got to run the 10 miles. She's like, no problem. You're going to, what I want you to do is take one day off. I was like, wow, she actually gets me. <laughs> so she goes, I want you to take a day off. And, uh, you know, we're going to do some things. And, and I want you to try to run two days from now. I was like, ah, this is really good. It's like, good. And, I, and then she worked on it. I get back a couple times. And, and be honest with you, I ran the 10 mile. And I was very happy, injury free. Um, so about a year later, I hurt my heel. I mean, this, I mean, I, I mean, it was like really painful and I, it, I could run, but it was a lot of pain. So I went back, completely different physical therapist. And I walked in and she goes, okay, Sergeant Major, this is what we're going to do. I want you to take off for like two months. I'm like, hmm. And I, I didn't say anything, I walked out. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to run tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> true statement, I did, I didn't run tomorrow. So I figured it out. I think there's two ways to look at everybody that comes into your office as a physical therapist. That most people, and I, and I, I do some kind of somewhat sympathize with the physical therapist. You get a lot of people coming in. But there's two ways to look at people when you come in uh, for physical therapists. There's one, the person that wants to get out of something. And then there's the other person, and I call it the NFL quarterback. The NFL quarterback is going to play on Sunday. And I think what they, the second person had failed to realize that I was going to play on Sunday. Uh, and I wasn't in there for you to tell me um, just rest. I could have done that on my own. I wanted you to tell me how could I go play on Sunday. I'm going to play on Sunday. How could I get there the best way? And I think we have to start looking at our individuals and how they fuel their bodies, how they get sleep and nutrition, because they're, we want them to be ready for that game. Um, and don't look at them as somebody that just wants profile. Oh, yeah, I knew, I knew that photo was up because everybody's staring at it. Um, don't judge my weight on that and all that other stuff. Uh, we came into a gym and soldiers were like, Sergeant Major, can you lift this? I'm like, from a cold stead start over 50, that is not a nice feeling. So um, I did a little bit of warm-up, and then they threw on, I don't even know what that weight is. Um, it was kilos and some other things. So it might be 315 or more. I just, it was not, I was not sure. I was like, this, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Uh, and we're in Poland. <laughs> so, you know, they didn't get any sleep. It's like... Um, and then they're like, hey, go do this. I was like, man, I better do it. It's going to be bad. Um, so I got it up, and then they took the photo. And the kid behind me was like, it's not this you got to worry about. It's this kid like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's a good transition. 
Um, so we got a lot of things going on with the Army, and we're working. We talked about uh, nutrition. That's really high on my list. Um, I'm really how we feel the body. I think we like to go to body composition. We like to go to PT. I usually say you can ruin a good PT session in one meal. And when we look at how do we uh, get soldiers out of the overweight, we always want to do two a days, which is, I think is the worst thing you could ever do. And they're like, yeah, because you're more prone to injury. And, oh, by the way, when you stop doing that second PT session and you don't change the diet, you just gain the weight back. Happens every time. So I said, hey, why don't you take that person to breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And nobody, oh, wow, that's unique. Um, so here's what we're doing on nutrition. We're really trying to do what's called a warrior restaurant center. It's different. Where we bring in vendors and somebody else would cook the food, not 92 goals. And then what I really like is that they would be able to go anywhere on an installation, use their ID card. If you're a meal card holder, you go to the commissary, you get a sandwich, and it's charged to the government. And so we're trying to get that pilot. And every time I get almost there, then I get slowed down again. So uh, I'm trying to get that finished before, but we got slowed down again. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm really working on that. And we've been trying to do this for years, and I'm not giving up. Uh, so Warrior Restaurant Centers. I've told the whole uh, enterprise for nutrition, I want a meal prep program in every dining facility in the United States Army, not a to-go plate. They're like, sorry, you got to-go plates. Okay, that's not meal prep. <laughs> it's like, you're killing me. So you can order a nutritious meal that's already got the calories in there, and we have to, the hard part was actually the containers and how to clean the containers. So we got that figured out. So that you could order online, Fort Bragg already does this, they go through Facebook. And they just get the order and say, when I go in the, in the dining facility or the Warrior restaurant uh, for lunch or breakfast, I would actually get my meal for dinner, and I could get up to one or two meals. Special Forces has been doing this for a while. We're trying to get that all throughout the Army. The body composition, we're working on that. 540 exemption. Everybody like that? No claps for that one? Come on, that was big news. Was like, you're, like, yeah, in this room, you're like, whatever, Sergeant Major. The rest of the Army really likes that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so we got uh, two other things we're going to do. Uh, we're going to do um, a new tape site. So if you didn't watch the Facebook Live, uh, men and women were taped in two different areas. Uh, men had two, two sites, women had three. We're going to cut all that out. Both people are going to be taped around the belly button. We're just going to redo the math. And um, that's going to start for the active fund at about 1 October. And then we're going to give you about a year. We're going to give you an alibi. So if you don't like that, you can go to the old tape test for a year because it's a little more stringent. Um, and then if you don't like that, we'll put you on a DEXA. And then, then you'll cry, and then you go back and say, give me the tape test. This room clearly gets that. <laughs> so uh, the other people don't. Um, they're like, oh, yeah, sorry, that tape test is bad. I'm like, okay, go, go sit on the DEXA. <laughs> like, oh, never mind, go back to the tape test. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> So that's going to be a program that you actually, uh, we're looking to buy some in-body 770s, that's a bioimpedance that just run electrodes. It's not as accurate as the DEXA, but you can use that, um, and we're going to start that program. So if you don't like the tape, you can use what's called a supplemental to verify your tape test. Uh, so 540, and then tape, a new tape site, and, and you can do a DEXA, an in-body 770. Um, so we've got a lot of initiatives in the holistic health and fitness, and I'll kind of just stop there so we can actually uh, have a conversation about anything you want to talk about with the, uh, any, uh, um, anything you want to talk about with me, Sergeant Major of the Army. I'd just tell you, I'd leave you this, um, this thing, uh, this little quote that I, I don't know how it came up. Actually, I do. A lot of times, you know, I'm traveling around the world, and... You know, people are waiting for the Sergeant Major Army or General Klein to solve our problems. And, and the other day, I was just sitting there and I go, um, you got all these things that happen. And then there's a whole bunch of people. I said, anybody could have done this. And I said, but nobody did. So think about that. So a lot of times people will come up and say, Sergeant Major, my pay is, needs to be fixed. Send a note to the Sergeant Major Army. And I say, all along the way, Oh, there's a whole bunch of leaders that somebody could have fixed this, but nobody did. So I really want you to think about that. Somebody could have, somebody, when I was at JBLM, you can go there now. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of fitness lockers. We did not have 
you know, approved holistic health and fitness, but we said this is really important to our Army. And somebody could have done it, but nobody had made that initiative. And uh, when it gets to your level and whatever you're doing, don't pass that on and think about that. All along the way, somebody else could have done it, and nobody did, and it needs to stop with you. Uh, and not all the way to the Sergeant Major of the Army or the Chief. Um, and I could I apply that not just to holistic health and fitness, that's to everything we do. Probably I could give the same advice to our country, right? Anybody saw something happening, instead of pulling out your phone, you could have stopped it, but nobody did. Um, just think about that as you walk around the world. Okay, I've babbled long, long enough, and uh, we're ready for questions. Before we go to questions, can you inform everybody on what you're thinking with wellness checks? Oh, yes. There's a lot of initiatives. Um, number one, annual wellness checks. Uh, we, we've seen this work at Fort Riley, and I'm, I'm a huge fan. And we saw the suicides and all the harmful behaviors go down. And then Mission 100 did the same thing. They did, everybody was required to go see uh, a military family life counselor. And, and that's how it kind of started. There's some other things to it, and I'm just not, you know, uh, we talked about this yesterday. You had to follow up with your leadership and what you saw. So we watched us have very good success throughout the Army. So I proposed to the Department of the Army is that we need to resource this appropriately for an annual wellness check. So as a part of either your PHA, not telling commanders how to do it, but a soldier would get checked out every year um, mentally. And it doesn't have to require behavioral health. Uh, I gave a couple examples. You can go to military family life counselor or a chaplain. But there may be another resource uh, that we could use. But if annually, you would get a face-to-face, -face, somebody look you in the eye, and then have a conversation on how you're doing mentally. And we would do that annually. Um, and that's how we're implementing that, and I propose that. We've taken it on uh, from the Department of the Army to make sure we got the appropriate resources for commanders to do that. And this is not, you know, you may be able to do some virtually. We talked about some of those remote sites. Um, TRADOC would probably be how we're going to do that for recruiters. But I still think a face-to-face -face with a counselor or somebody. And then there's, got, there's a follow-up with the leadership that, yes, you've done this check, and how are you performing? So that's the initiative we have for uh, wellness checks. Uh, so my question is, you said that if we need funding to ask for it, so I'm asking a big ask. Um, no. <laughs> so there's a gap. I didn't say I was going to prove it. No, I'm sorry. There is a gap for our dietitians to fuel um, in the training environment in between meals outside of the dining facility. When folks switch from that human getting the three hots and the hot to that human weapon system, and we don't have funding allocated for that as dietitians. You see that in collegiate and pro, that fueling station, et cetera. So we don't have the tools of our trade to do our job to demonstrate what right looks like. Can you help us get a funding line so that we don't have to fight that bureaucratic system? Sure. We've been fighting it in SOCOM for 15 years. As we don't have an ideal solution. We're going after it. We have an option, and I think it's legal. Um, you think it's legal? Yeah. It might be legal, sir, Major, so we want you to do it. Right. right. Yeah. So I know we need yeah. help on that initiative. It's a big one. We have combat rations working on a, a solution, but it won't solve the training side of it and how we train our soldiers. Yeah, I, I'm all in. Uh, I'd say uh, send me like a small pilot on what you want to do. Here's what I need. Uh, the good news of what uh, General Klein didn't talk about is now that we've done this monthly meeting and then the other meeting, well, the, the, the majority of the folks in there for the, the meeting uh, own the money, own the resources. And when I ask for meager funds, they usually go, yes, sir, major. And what we like to do is just start with the pilots. Here's what we're struggling with. We want to do this. Show me that. I'm a, I'm a fan, especially on how do you fuel the body, especially when you, you know, get to you know, I'm getting ready to go on a mission and I don't have the right fuel to grab. Because sometimes you do have to go and you gotta go now. You know, you gotta grab that. So just show me how that, what that looks like and then let's try it. And then do we get the results? Now, now I, I, I do wanna be really clear. I'm not all in on, yeah, we're just gonna do whatever you tell me to do. 
Uh, so I will try it, and then if we get the results we want based off data, then that's how the wellness checks came up. We tried it, worked, we saw the results that we needed, and then eventually, if I like it a lot, then I, I propose we do this for the Army. And um, what I've learned also is you, you do actually need a champion, and unfortunately there's probably five of those that you need. You need the Sergeant Major of the Army, the Vice, the Under, or the Secretary, or the Chief. Really, now, things can get done without them, but it just makes it a lot harder. So uh, just give me a small proposal, either use of SOC, uh, it's going to be also the next Army of the Army. So uh, just send that to me um, in a small portion, and, and we'll try it out. Cool. Sergeant Major, it's in the Colonel Owens. So uh, I guess uh, my question or um, my statement is, with this, this day and age with technology and uh, personnel on TikTok, as well as uh, Instagram utilizing brand ambassadors, uh, what would be your take on the Army actually incentivizing personnel like in this room who are passionate about H2L to become brand ambassadors where they can actually, um, depending on their background or profession, spread like uh, fitness tips, um, uh, nutrition, if they have a like background in nutrition and a proper certification, for those personnel from a grassroots environment to uh, and embolden soldiers to like take ownership as far as lives uh, moving forward. Yeah. Um, I think there's nothing stopping you from doing that, is there? Nothing from stopping me, but actually endorsing brand ambassadors under the Army. As Sergeant so and so, brand ambassador for the Army and H2L program. That way, personnel would, I think it would generate interest for people to say, hey, Army, I'm a brand ambassador for the Army, and I represent this unit, i.e. Fort Bragg or Fort Benning, have this platform in which to technique. Uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, I guess, yes, maybe. Uh, here's here's my my opinion is that if it's really good soldier you don't have to I don't have to knight you brand ambassador um, you know it, you know uh, there's a lot of influencers on the internet and they're good with nutrition and fitness and they don't need approval you know Dominus go ahead from you know Sergeant Major of the Army anybody they're good and if you're really good they're gonna follow you and they're gonna listen to you and go oh this worked um, and that's kind of the powerful piece of, if you're not good and they're not listening to you, you know, you know, I can call you brand ambassador all you want and it's just not going to be effective. Um, so I think yes, but I think here's my opinion. If you put out really bad information on the Internet, I mean, they're not going to follow you and they'll criticize you. And, I, and trust me, nobody knows this better than I do. <laughs> so uh, um there's always going to be some critiques. Look, and I, I'm not, I clearly get my fair share of, I hate you, Sergeant Major of the Army moments, but on social media. Uh, but that's something I think as an Army we need to uh, do a better at. We're, and some of our programs make us less, we're risk adverse. Um, and for all the right reasons, sometimes it's like, we can't tell you that because it's under investigation and, and everybody in the world thinks we're hiding something. It's actually not true. <laughs> so um, I agree. Um, I, I think we could take a look at that. Uh, but I think holistically from my perspective, socially, uh, on the social media space, we got to get our brand out, not just through nutrition. It's through like everything that we do. We got to open up more. Uh, I was a little disappointed. Again, another of my failures is I wanted to live stream uh, the best uh, squad competition last year. And we didn't get that done, and that's my failure. But uh, we got a plan this year that it will be live streamed. We're going to open it up. You're going to watch the competitors as they go through the best squad competition for the Army this year. Um, so that's what I mean. We got to open ourselves up. And that comes with risks. Some, they'll be, ah, that wasn't hard enough, or oh, my day. Sergeant Major of the Army. My name is JP Lane. I'm a double amputee Purple Heart veteran. And just to talk about real quickly the first topic you talked about, physical fitness. 
and leaders being there to actually inspire their troops, that is one of the most important things that I feel is necessary as a leader. And even though I'm no longer in the Army, I'm a double amputee, and I get out there at every Army station we go to, and I still hit PT with the troops. So the fact that if I'm able to do it and actually get to these ACFT exercises and accomplish the mission, I'm just ch challenging the leaders in here to do the same. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, if you haven't talked to him, he's a wonderful human being, and his wife is uh, fantastic too. And it's always good to see you. Um, and, and I really appreciate that. And I agree with you so much so that last year I made every nominee sergeant major in the army take the ACFT. They were really happy with me. <laughs> so I wanted to go back to the dietitian comment a minute ago about the modular food. Um, what I think is important, we actually have part of that solution already available for everyone. It's called more rations. Um, not everything she's talking about, but the more rations are actually on DLA's website. I just pulled it up to make sure we could get it. And where I want to encourage folks, it's basically if you do the calculations for the day and three MREs is not enough calories, you can order the more rations. In there includes caffeinated gum, caffeinated applesauce, caffeinated uh, pudding, which we'll talk about in Warfighter Fatigue Management when, in Colonel Lim's talk. But the reality is most units don't order this. So when I was out at Schofield, we had the 3rd Brigade of the 25th Infantry Division and um, was led by Colonel Rob Ryan, and we had them order it for almost all their exercises. The performance of the unit just went through the roof. So much so that they actually ordered the whole annual supply of more rations because they, or, they build them based on how much we use it. And so we aren't using this capability out there. It's not everything she's describing and, and the gap she's describing, but it is something that's in the system that everyone could order. And when they do do it, the soldiers love it because it's food that can fit in their cargo pocket. They can eat it in between MREs. Um, it's food on the go, and because it has a little bit of caffeine in it, it gives them a little bit of a performance boost. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone knows it's out there, and we need to use it or they won't make more of it, right? So we actually have to order it for it to actually be a sustainable product. So um, just wanted to add that to the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Major Kearney. So I think the incentive for the ACFT, the, the 550 and the ACFTT. I like it, 550. I, I like it. So my question is. It was 540, um, I'm your, sorry. What was your decision like for personnel that are on a profile that score over that amount to, do, to basically not allow them to get that, take part in that incentive? For them? They're not going to. They're not going to? They will not take part of the incentive. No, you're okay. correct. Oh, I was just curious what was the, what was the. Oh, you want to, you want to, why? I was curious what was the, the thought. Because I said so? <laughs> okay, got it. Joe <laughs> <laughs> Klein said it was good for him. Um, <laughs> okay, there's, it's called science. So we did a study with Eucerium. I know people like, sort of major, you're big. I know, but half the time I tell people they just don't believe me anymore. It's like you said it. So we had these things called doctors and scientists. They came in, they did a study. And what they said is when you, this was tied to height and weight. I, I just want to remind you of it. This wasn't getting you an alibi on the ACFT or height and weight. The science said when we did the study that most people, there was a small group of men and women that were inaccurately flagged. It was actually higher for women. It was 1%. I want to say this very clearly. Most of you are not in the 1%. <laughs> 1% of men and 5% of women were inaccurately flagged. When we gave them, and they took all six events, and they scored 540 or above, we captured that 5% that were inaccurately flagged. And I say this, flagged, meaning when we taped them, they were taped. They busted the tape. They were over body fat by the Army. Tape standards but they had scored 540 above on the PT test. When we put them on the DEXA, they passed the DEXA scan. That population was in the 540. They had to take all six events and be in the population. And it was the, the goal of that was to not inaccurately flag men and women 
that had actually passed a DEXA scan, not the tape test. So there was a very small population of men and women when they were taped, they were over, we were flagging them and chaptering them out of the Army, and they had passed the DEXA scan, and when we gave them 540, that number was reduced. And I'm not going to go down and say, if you've got a profile and you don't take the full six-event PT test, because the scientist says that's the goal what I'm going after, not to give you an alibi on the tape test. Sergeant Major, my name is uh, Sergeant Barron. I'm with the Army Resilience Directorate. And as I look at over these past two days now with uh, H2F and we look at it holistically, I wonder if there's any looks now to start revamping NCO PDS. When we put three stripes on a soldier's chest, they suddenly become a counselor. They become a physical therapist sometimes. They become an athletic trainer. They become, they design PT programs. They're looking at mechanics that they're supposed to. Um, but when we look at uh, BLC right now, there's not as much. With They're going through the, you know, the PRT manual, and they're learning how to lead that formation in those movements. But are we really looking at, like, at BLC training them what does a proper, you know, deadlift look like? How do they make that correction? At ALC, are we teaching those staff sergeants to start designing programs for their squads? At SLC, can we start integrating that kind of stuff for platoon sergeants who are supposed to be looking at four squads worth of programs and making sure that, you know, it, it makes sense, you know, they're not overdoing it, but also nesting it with the commander's intent for the, the unit. And I, I don't see it, you know, I, it's been now six years since I went to SLC Sergeant Major, but that was not a part of my, of my NCO PDS experience. And I don't think a lot of NCOs have that exact, you have that, you know, they have that same experience. Is there any look at starting to change maybe fundamentally how we train NCOs from the very beginning to start filling those roles we expect of them when they put those strikes? Um, yes, I thought that was uh, part of the briefs yesterday. Um, but the goal was, and you can right now in the basic leader course, there's an elective when you go to BLC, the basic leader course, that you can get a tactical strength and conditioning facilitator accreditation. 100%. And ultimately, and Jadox, our major who's in the front row, has heard me talk about this a thousand times. I said, why are we teaching the extended rectangular formation in BLC? <laughs> so uh, oh, that's great. That's awesome. It was, the ultimate goal is, uh, and, you know, don't hate me. You know, my, the ultimate goal is to get every tactical strength and conditioning facilitator who's a contractor, put them out of a job. <laughs> so that's all I call those our NCOs. But that's my goal. Um, but I will caution you on the whole PME part. So, you know, you, you, you don't like what I'm about to say, so I usually just blurt it out. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> so if you've got a, uh, uh, a master fitness trainer in your organization or you have one of these um, strength coaches, instead of them putting together a PT plan, why aren't you taking your NCOs and saying, okay, this is how you do what you just said? And you've got... That sergeant's in your unit for three years. I got him for 30 days in PME, so who's going to do this? You or me? So remember, we're giving you holistic health and fitness at the brigade. It's how you're using them. And you heard it yesterday. Hey, master fitness trainer, go set up the PT session. Oh, no. <laughs> no, master fitness trainer. Here's what you were taught in week one. Are you Go take every NCO I have in this unit and teach them what you just got taught in week one of the Master Physical. And next week you're gonna do week two, and then I'm, and then I'm gonna take the, and, and yeah, you're right. I want them to be all that, 100%. But we're not gonna do that in PME. I need you to do that. Major King, 2nd Brigade, 98th Training Division. Uh, I heard your call, I'm gonna go back to nutrition for a moment. I heard your call for leaders to be present in the defects and demand that defects do better. And uh, I heard all of your initiatives with the Army is bringing out warrior restaurants and the meal plans, et cetera. Uh, my question is how will the Army compete with the onslaught of advertising from commercial restaurants and other uh, for-profit establishments that are located on our installations? Make it good food. I mean, that's right. I mean, if I go, okay, uh, anybody uh, JBLM in here? Uh, first group? No? Uh, anybody been in first group in here? 
Okay, where does every first group soldier eat um, breakfast and lunch? Where, where? But you got like a Burger King on JBLM. Why don't you get a Burger King? Because the defect's really awesome, right? It's right there in the compound, and they won't leave the compound. They go right over there. I've eaten over there a couple times. It's really good food. So that's what I need leaders present, because you're going to demand better product. You know, it, this competition should be, you know, you get eggs, I get eggs. You know, how do you make them better than we make them? You know, it's like, so we should demand good products in our dining facilities and not, I've heard this before, like, hey, close down the Burger King. I do. I want to close down Burger King because nobody's going there. But I knew, I actually do need leaders present to stop some of the silly things that happen in our defects. So I had this kid, and he was, he looked like you, Terry. He's like this tall, I mean fit, and he goes up to get a sandwich, and I happen to be standing there, it's like, and he goes, he goes, uh, can I get a sandwich? And they made the sandwich right there for him, he goes, can I get another one? And I'm like, no, you're only authorized to get one sandwich. I'm like, go get the D, I, I, I go get the defect manager. Everybody hates it when I say that, because you know I'm mad. So they go back and they get the deal. I was like, okay, I've told you all a thousand times. Soldiers get really frustrated. They come here. They should not go away hungry. Look at him. He's eight feet tall. He's fit. He needs more calories. Give him another sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're getting frustrated by. It takes a leader present to say, we're not going to do this in my defect. Because what happens, you're right. Then they get frustrated, then go get as many burgers as they want. They unfortunately have to pay for it, and it's not that healthy. So I don't, I bring all the, the restaurants you want on, a, on an installation, and our warrior restaurants should be a better, a cheaper price. And then we go, why would, why would I go anywhere? I paid, what was it, $4.85? I just, I used my credit card this morning. I didn't get a receipt. Uh, so, 485 for breakfast, all you can eat. You can't beat that in any restaurant I've ever been in in the Army. Anywhere around the world since I've been alive. That's how I want to shut them down if that's what we want to do. But it takes a leader standing there going, give the kid two sandwiches. Is it really going to break your budget if he gets two? I mean, that, just, that's what I mean is that I want to have all those options open to our soldiers and a lot of people ask me to close them down. All they're going to do is drive downtown. Okay, you think I'm wrong. I, I, I went to, I was on Fort Bragg, and someone said, hey, go to eat. I was like, let's go to defects. He's like, no, we're going to go somewhere else. I'm like, oh, okay. We drove down. I was on Fort Bragg, and we drove at least, you know, 20, 25 minutes to get to this place, and then it was full of soldiers. Everyone's like, oh, the defects closed and they won't drive. I was like, well, they figured out how to drive down here. Uniform downtown, getting food. So make the product so good that people will go and travel to that food. That's the quality that I want and the nutrition that we have. They're not going to get that if you don't even give the kid two sandwiches. And if you can't get it heated. So I went in the restaurant and defect yesterday. They're like, all right, I got a sandwich. Oh, great, that's cool. Can I heat it? They're like, no. <laughs> so if I go to any place that's got a sandwich, they can put it in an oven for me. Why they can't do that in their defect? That's the word. That's what I mean. That's where I'm going with it. Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to tell anybody to say no. I'm going to bring them all on. Um, but I want our quality to be better than their quality.